most important lesson we can ever learn while on this earth, believe it or not, is not a human lesson at all. The most important lesson we can ever learn is alien. To understand alien speech, alien writing, and alien language is the most important thing you can ever do while walking this planet. And the reason why is because our lives really mean nothing. Because in the end, it has to be all of us that comes to an understanding of a higher consciousness. Because if we don't, it all contributes to why we all die and why the world all ends. In the last three episodes of this podcast, I have been talking about my experience with God and the afterlife. And the reason that I'm telling you this is because it is my life story. It is all completely true. And the saddest part of all is many of you have given me the harshest criticisms because you believe that it is insanity, it is crazy, and it is a waste of time. I don't want to listen to it. And unfortunately, the sad part of this knowledge is you're free to feel that way, but always remember You believe this because you believe that anything that you cannot see is insane. And you are taught this by this world. And the philosophy of our world, when you really understand what insanity is, it's really vile. Because insanity, by definition, all it means is you're seeing things that I cannot see. You're hearing things that I do not hear. And thus, you are insane. That's all insanity is. You are experiencing an alternate reality that I am not. Therefore, you are insane. Now, if you really understand that statement, does that sound intelligent to you at all? It does not. And always know one thing and never forget this. The version of Earth that we are all experiencing right now is the dumbest, most ignorant race of humans that ever walked the earth. And this is not a statement that is made out of my personal opinion. Uh, Cave paintings, pyramids, stelas, and hieroglyphics tells us that the earth has a cycle. Every 5,000 years, a civilization rises, technology, and then vanishes. Rises, technologies, and then vanishes rises, technology, and then vanishes. It's the cycle of the earth. It's the e-cycle of the earth. So knowing this cycle, we can determine which race of people are smartest and which ones are dumb. Every civilization that comes on the earth only gets 5,125 years. That's all you get as a civilization, 5,125 years. During that 5,125 years, you go from living in caves to building houses, agriculture, schools, medicine, all these things, and you gradually progress to the technological age where you invent automobiles, you invent flying machines, you invent all the things that we have today. And after you get to a certain point, you understand that there is a stargate. You enter into the stargate You go to this place in the cosmos where we call God lives. You then return back to this world with great knowledge and understanding that allows us to move into the next phase, which is dismantling this world for the next version of human beings. And this is all supposed to be achieved within 5,125 years. Our version of the earth We passed 5,125 years in 2012. It is 2019. We have not gone past the moon in 50 years. All the other civilizations that came before us had already gone to the moon, gone to Mars, gone to Saturn, gone to Pluto, and some of the outlying planets, and they entered into the Stargate, saw God or the Creator comes back to the Earth, And they did it, all in 5,125 years. We're the only civilization that hasn't done it. Which tells you we are not on the bright side. 
we are not an intelligent species. We're probably the dumbest that ever walked the earth. So the reason I'm saying this is because in this episode, we're going to be talking about alien language, alien understanding alien language, alien writings, all of these things, because the reason aliens are here is to help us. And the reason they're having to help us, we're dumb. As an entire human civilization, we're dumb. And the sad part about this is, and, and, and I think we're, evolve, we're devolving into a state of ignorance because when I'm telling you the story of my life, everything I'm telling you is true. Whether you call it delusional or psychotic, it doesn't matter. Everything is true. So what I'm telling you is, this is what happened to me. This is why I am who I am. Because before I came on this earth, no one knows what the revelation means. I'm the only human being on the earth that actually knows what it means. And because I know what it means, every Lord God and Christ that exists comes to me. That's the part you believe is delusional. But there is proof in everything else that I do. Before I came, every documentary, every book that was ever written on the Pyramid of Egypt says, no one will ever know the answers. I can open it. I can tell you exactly what it does. There's several things that are in the Mayan civilization that tells us well, what the end will be, but it also says no one will know until the great God returns. I can tell you exactly what it means. In the Incas, the Mayans, the Teotihuacans, all these things, these structures created around the world, they have writings on them that says no one will know until the great Quetzalcoatl returns and he'll bring us great wisdom. And yet I can tell you what every single thing means. So my experience has given me an insight and a knowledge that allows me to open up nearly anything that is in hieroglyphic, any writing, any stela, any pyramid, any obelisk, anything that is ancient, I immediately know what it is. So that in itself is considered proof that whatever I experienced enhanced my mental abilities to a degree that it outperforms everyone else. And because this in itself is proof, you should not ever doubt the existence of someone else's experience because you don't experience it. And that is not intelligence. So the reason I'm saying this is because we're going to move into an understanding of alien knowledge, alien writing, alien understanding, and you'll know how I understand anything that's written by the ancients or aliens because it all comes from the source, what we call God. That's the only reason I can understand everything. It comes from the source, God. So the one thing you'll know about our world, and it'll show you how we've devolved into a state of just being ignorant, in the ancient world, um, mathematicians were just as important as they are in our world. Mathematicians are our scientists. And the mathematician is seen as probably one of the smartest people on the earth, if not the smartest. And today, mathematicians believe the talk of God or anything of ethereal as heaven is ignorance. It's dumb. It's, you know, something that insane people do. But always remember the greatest teachers in our history, Aristotle, Plato, and my favorite, Rene Descartes, all of them were mathematicians. And they weren't mathematicians like NASA or you know, some organization. They were considered the greatest mathematicians in the entire world. And the one thing all mathematicians did back in the ancient world was explain the existence of God. Every single one of them. Every mathematician could explain the existence of God with math. So don't believe the ignorance that is being taught to you that anyone that has an experience that you have an experience couldn't possibly be true. So let that go and understand that the most intelligent of us must acknowledge that there is a supreme designer. And if you cannot acknowledge that there is a supreme designer, then you have to ask yourself, why is the world wiped out every 5,125 years? That in itself purely shows you that there is a pattern. A pattern is usually considered a design. So knowing that should lead us into understanding 
what we're about to talk about next. Um, having said that, uh, a lot of people gave me criticism that said, you know, we like better your podcast with pictures. So, so I'm going to make this one um, a lot nicer, uh, a lot more agreeable to the eyesight. And again, I want to thank all of you so much for taking the time to um, watch this episode. And thank you for sharing my life with me. And I'm going to get into the next episode. It is called Learn to Read the Alien Language. They have been coming to our world since our world began. And although we see them all over our world, we don't know why. They come to our world for only one purpose, to educate us, to elucidate us of a time that is to come. Every civilization of Earth only gets 5,125 years. In this period, we are supposed to be able to rise from agriculture to technology and then to leave the Earth, enter the Stargate, travel to other worlds, go to Mars, go to Saturn, go to Pluto, and then come back with the knowledge that will change our world. And as of yet, we are by far the slowest and dumbest race of civilization we've ever seen. After 5,125 years, we've only been to the moon. And that is the reason they are here. When aliens come upon our world, they're not here just to be seen. They're teaching us how to get to the next step. All the other civilizations that came before us have successfully completed their task in the allotted time, all except for us. So because we are remedial in our understanding, they're assisting us to understanding what we need to know. And the understanding they will unveil today that you will begin to understand is greater than anything you can imagine. The knowledge that comes will prove that every scientist we have on the Earth has no idea what they're talking about. Every space agency, every astronaut, every astrophysicist has no idea what they're talking about. Space and everything we've been taught by our scientists and our teachers is completely untrue. And the only way to understand this is to show you. Aliens are showing us every day what we need to know, but we refuse to listen. And they show us with this. These are crop circles. And we know they are created by aliens and not humans because the knowledge contained in them is not known to humans. This, for example, is a strange flower and it has strange writing on it that no one has ever seen. It has been found in the UK. The aliens left this message because this message represents something that we must learn. Everything they leave as a crop circle is something that we must learn. And this crop circle that is full of leaves and strange language is actually the Voynich Manuscript, which is also in the UK. They're telling us we need to learn this book. It is very important as the Voynich Manuscript tells us what happens to us in the future. This symbol here has been featured on a number of television programs. And although people think it only to be the Roswell Rock, 
this crop circle is showing us what it actually does. And so does this one. This is actually a gift to human beings. It is a key that actually shows us something about the cosmos that we can imagine. Many of us believe the earth one day will come to an end, so scientists are looking all over the world for a planet to go live on. And once we get there, we can begin terraforming, which is turning that planet into a planet that can sustain life. And yet, to find these planets are light years, millions of light years away from us, a perfectly suitable one for us. And yet this object that the aliens are showing us is so important to us, but we have no idea. Because with this object, we don't need to fly a million light years away to find an Earth. We don't need to find an Earth somewhere in the cosmos that's suitable for us to live. With this object here, believe it or not, this object not only shows us how to find the perfect planet to live on, this object shows us how to create one. Yes, it shows us how to create a planet. All of these are alien creations so that we will understand what happens in the end. And in order for us to begin to move forward, we must understand that there is an end to our lives and our earth. And our time has run out. And that's why they are helping us. Yet and still, we still must cross the line. Even though it is taking longer for us than any other humans that ever lived to cross the finish line, we still must cross the finish line. And because of this, they are teaching us how to learn. Aliens are always called the star people. And because they are called the star people, they are telling us how they communicate. Stars, constellations, cosmos. Although our teachers in the world will tell you math is the universal language, that is completely not true. Math is no more important than being a painter or a pianist and neither of them can get you into the cosmos. The ancients have shown us many lessons of space travel, and one of them is, you don't need math at all. Math is very good for getting off the ground. Math is very good for landing. But to find your destination in space, you don't need math at all. The one thing you'll find about aliens, aliens when they come to our world, they're never interested in mathematicians. They're never interested in the mathematician's mind because the mathematician's mind is not free. They will not listen. You cannot teach them. In nearly every lesson of alien visitation, they always select the writer, the singer, the dancer, the musician, the actor, or the businessman. These people are apparently more interesting to alien life than all the rest of us. So to understand true knowledge is to get rid of the idea that the mathematician is the highest level of understanding and education. It isn't. They're interested in all of us, mostly the creative ones. So to begin to understand their language is to look at these. This is another crop circle. Look at its design. It's telling you something but they're using several different dimensions to get their point across. An alien intelligence functions in multiple dimensions. A human being functions in just three. And that's what makes us slow. To understand multiple dimensions and to think in multiple dimensions allows your mind to understand anything that is created by aliens. Because everything they do is multi-dimensional, even communication. In the knowledge of the forever time, we showed you that our holy symbol of the cross is not actually holy at all. The holy symbol of the cross only means direction, navigation, travel. And the cross is always found in one place, 
the sun. If you look at these crop circles again, you will understand their language because this is the sun. This is also the sun. And so is this. And when you understand that this is the sun, you'll understand they are telling us something. And when you see a cross, you know it means the sun and you also know it means navigation. In this crop circle, you will see what they're actually saying. If you notice it, you'll see the cross at the center. And yet, you'll see it looks strange. It's, it has many sides, many shapes. And the reason they've done this is because once you enter into the sun, you'll see multi-dimensions. That's what this is showing you once you enter the sun. It has multi-dimensions. So until you are able to accept the reality and understand multidimensional life, you'll never understand how to be supremely intelligent. They are creating all of these for us to learn because we must reach the finish line. This too is also the sun. And this, and this. And yet, do you notice anything strange about it? These are the most repeated crop circles we have ever seen on the Earth. And no one knows what it means. No one at NASA, no one in any part of the world knows what it means. It's because everything we've been taught about science is completely untrue. Everything we've been taught about space is not true. 90% of everything they teach us about the universe is completely untrue. And although we believe in Hawking and Einstein and all the greats, they have no idea what they're talking about. The sun is showing us these six strange circles. The center is always the sun. These six strange circles are telling us something very important that we need to understand in order to leave our solar system. And what this is telling us is, the sun does not have gravity that extends all the way to eight and nine planets. The sun's gravity only reaches six of them. No scientist on earth knows this. This knowledge you are hearing is being presented for the first time on earth. Scientists for many years have been studying star systems all over the cosmos and they've scratched their heads at a conundrum. They've seen solar systems around the cosmos they've analyzed them and they've said the sun's gravity at some of these solar systems isn't strong enough to move all of these planets and yet they all move together. How does it do that? Science has never been able to explain it. They've seen strange worlds where they've watched solar systems and even galaxies and they can't understand how the outlying planets move when it's clear that the sun doesn't have enough power to move all of the planets, and yet they all move in unison. They can never figure it out. And that's why aliens are here. They are here to educate us, to elucidate us of how to leave this solar system. This diagram will show you it's repeated over and over and over on this earth. The sun is in the center. These surrounding six objects, these circles, are actually planets. This crop circle is actually showing us the only thing the sun actually controls in our solar system. Six planets. Everything else is controlled by a different planet. The gravity of the sun reaches past Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter and it stops. The reason it stops is because there is a colossal giant in our own solar system. It takes over. That colossal giant is Saturn. Saturn's gravitational pull is seen by its rings. 
it is showing you it has a huge gravitational pull and Saturn locks on to Jupiter and Saturn carries the other remaining planets. These two work together to move our solar system. Without Saturn, all the other planets would not work together. And if this sounds astounding to you and sounds unbelievable to you, notice Jupiter. Notice the angle of its lines. The angle of Jupiter isn't straight across like all the other planets. It's kind of tilted. And the reason why it is tilted directly in the position of Saturn. Saturn is pulling it. And if you don't believe what I'm saying, that is why aliens are here to show you. This is crop circle number one. If you look at this crop circle, you will see what they're saying. It is showing you the diagram of the sun. It is showing you what the sun controls. It is showing you the planets. And this is Saturn. The large planet that Saturn is pulling is Jupiter. The other two are the remaining planets that Saturn also pulls. Saturn and the Sun, they are side by side because they work together in our solar system to move all of our planets. Everything you have been taught about gravity is untrue. Everything that our scientists and our astrophysicists have taught us about space, 90% of it is completely untrue. Alien beings are here to educate us so that we can understand how to move to the next level. This is also another crop circle showing the exact same thing. If you look at it, you will see the sun. You will also see the planets the sun controls. And then next to it, the ringed planet is Saturn. It too is holding on to the planet it controls, Jupiter and all the other remaining planets. It is astounding to the mind, it is astounding to the intellect, and none of this could possibly be true. And the reason this cannot be true is because our minds are not smart enough to accept wisdom. One of the worst things that has ever happened to this world is a philosophy that teaches us, if you believe it, it's true. If you think it, it's so. It is one of the worst idioms we have ever created. The aliens are showing us how the cosmos works. And our solar system works in unison with other planets. And all of this is created to show us how we are able to leave the earth. And when we put all of these together, you will see a beauty and an understanding that will completely annihilate anything you have ever learned. Because the reason they're showing us this is because Saturn is one of the most special planets that we will ever come to understand. It's greater than any planet, any sun, any star, anything we've ever heard on earth. It has magical properties that are godlike. And in order to understand it, it will stagger the mind and stagger the imagination. Saturn was named for God. And there is a reason why. It is the most powerful understanding of space and cosmos you will ever come to understand. And when you understand it, it is time for us to do things. You will realize everything you have ever learned is human ignorance. These crop circles and these markings have been written all over the world and they're here to tell us what happens in the end. And they're here to tell us, learn. The time is coming. You must learn. And to understand all of these things, all one has to do is go to Nazca. It's the same story. No human being has ever unlocked what Nazca lines are. I am the first. All the other symbols in Nazca, whether birds, flying birds, monkeys, spiders, it doesn't matter. 
Each of its appendages correspond with a star constellation. There is a reason that the people who created these were called the star people, because it's all they did all over the world was leave information about stars because the universal language is not mathematics. The universal language is star constellations. And if we go back to understand the cross, the cross is nothing more than a navigation tool. That's all it's for. And although we believe it to be holy, it is a navigation tool. And when we look at Nazca, this is one of the most misunderstood symbols on Nazca. It is strange. People don't know what it means. And a lot of people think it is just made up. And the people who believe this are our greatest PhDs in the world. And they have no idea what it does. This object is clearly the sun. And it is their understanding of the sun you will find is exactly like ours. If you see in the corner of each of this diagram, you'll see three squares. Three squares, in each square you will see four dots. Each dot represents weeks. So within each square, there are four dots. Three squares each, each with four dots, represents four weeks in each month. Around this diagram, you'll see on every corner, there are four dots in each square three squares in each corner, three, six, nine, twelve. All of these squares in each corner of the sun represents the sun's movement in our world. And this means 12 months pass by in a full rotation. It is astounding to the intellect, but then again, look at these small dots that surround this circular object. If you count the dots, you will find there are 30. 30 is the average time of a month. Everything about this object is screaming to you, this is the sun. If we understand the cross, you can see the cross here in the diagram. And we know the cross always represents the sun. Each of these markings around this object will confirm that. The sun always has eight cardinal points, as found in the Pyramid of Egypt, which also represents the sun. But always remember, there are 16 cardinal points for every smaller direction. And because the 17th always represents the center, if this is the sun, it should have 17 marks instead of 16. And as you can count, there are 17. And if we know this is the sun, we know that these 17 markings mean destination, but what is the object next to it? If you look at the object, there is a long line that is attached to it. And to understand it, we have to go back to this object. This is the spider. In the Knowledge of the Forever Time, episode five, we tell you what the spider is. The spider represents the sun. How do we know that? Remember, to unlock anything in Nazca, what do you have to do? Count the appendages. Its legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When you see eight, you know one thing. It corresponds to what in our solar system? Our planets. Everything you see that is written in a stone, written in a carving, in a pyramid, in a hieroglyph, in the sand, always means stars. So always look up anytime you see any writing that is alien. Always look to the stars. If the spider has eight legs, it means it represents something in our solar system or in the sky that has eight. We have eight planets. And if you notice his leg, it travels way far away from the spider. That's telling you the spider is connected to something else. So if the spider represents the sun, all we have to do is go back to this object that we've identified as the sun, and we'll see what is connected to the sun. This strange object that is connected to the sun, if you look at it, you'll figure it out. Look, 
think. What do you see? You see eight small objects in a circular pattern. Why would the sun be connected to these eight objects? This is telling you this sun is connected to eight planets. That's all it's telling you. This is how aliens speak to us. They start off with a basic remedial understanding. And then as time progresses, the messages get more sophisticated. And since this message is nearly 2,000 years old, it is time for us to catch on to the next lesson. It's not eight planets. There are six. They're also showing us the sun doesn't do it alone. It needs help. Saturn helps the sun pull objects in our solar system. This knowledge is unique and it has never been heard before on this earth. And yet, there is another revealing that we have not told you that is unbelievable. It is staggering. It will change everything we think about space and everything we think about our world. It will allow us to get to the finish line. We can do it. We can do it together. We have to. We don't have a choice.